and Roberto to do when he left? Who came up? Fina? What did he tell? Because he told them that they couldn't come, but he told them to do what? To pray, right? So we don't know. And then all of a sudden, they were down here praying and eating fish or something like that. Yeah. And then yeah. Roberto's phone rings, and they ran off. We don't know what exactly happened. I guess you have to... I see from his hat, and I just do it after. Yeah, you just got to spread it around. Sometimes you got to do that. So, so I guess you'll have to come out next week to figure out what was and that then, phone call about, and why did um, they just uh, run off like that. But today... And Roberto was eating a fish. Oh, she was eating a fish. He was. He was eating a fish. But today, we are going to continue to look at the topic of faith. Faith. And as we have went through this the last couple weeks, there's been one guy that seems to keep on popping up here and there. We've talked about when he prayed and then God sent a sacrifice to about, and he got into his prayer and burned up a sacrifice on those prophets of Baal. We talked about that. And then we talked about how he was feeling a little bit lonely and God reminded him he wasn't alone. I am talking about not this Elijah, but the Elijah in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't hear anything about that one. That was, that was a couple weeks ago. That was like, oh. uh, the very beginning we talked about that. We talked about not this Elijah, but the Elijah in the Bible. Elijah okay. So, we're going to continue to look at the story of Elijah. Yep. <laughs> Elijah, this is my story. We're going to continue to look at the story of Elijah because... There was, before he took on the prophet of Baal, before he did that, God had sent a drought in the land, which meant there was no rain. No rain, and if you got, how, many, how many of your parents have a garden? Anybody do any gardening at your house? I got three gardens. When you plant some vegetables and plant some seeds, what happens if it never... What? What happens if it never rains? Does anything grow? No. No, right? And so there was, there was a drought. There was no rain. So Elijah, then Elijah had to run because King Ahab was pretty mad about that. So he had to run, and he actually was in the wilderness. And we're going to see, because he's in the wilderness, which is like a desert. There's no food in the desert, right? No. No, there's no food in there. Yeah. There's no water. No. Nothing is growing. So how no. is Elijah no. going no. to be able to eat? Because mm -hmm. he's going to eat There is no food in there. Elijah seems to have a problem, doesn't he? Because there's no food. There's no water. What is Elijah what? going to yeah, do? Yeah, I know. Eat. I know. What's... He can eat camel. He can eat camel. camel. <laughs> he can eat just... <laughs> Uh, raw camel. camel. Raw camel. Mm. No, he can't eat grass. Angel, what is Elijah in the Bible yeah. going to do about this? He can't eat grass. No, he's not. He's going to eat grass. I guess he can eat grass. Maybe you could like find a camel and ride it all the way. Maybe find a camel and go on a nice little camel ride. That's not how you ride a camel. But let's see what Elijah does. Maybe he's going to pray to God to give him some food. Yeah. That worked for me. The Lord has provided for me daily in this way. Wow. They just delivered pizza? We'd be set. Hey, out there. The winged monsters fun. Oh, something for yourself and your son. But, Elijah, there's nothing left. She used it all up. I watched her. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry 
until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. Here, Mama. It's heavy. do not know why you are here. You are welcome to stay with us as long as you need to. There is an extra room upstairs. So what did Elijah do? He was in the desert, no food, no water, no rain coming down. What did he do, Maya? He prayed. To, he, he prayed for, for God to mm -hmm. give him some food. He prayed for God to give him some food. And then what happened? He got it. He got it. How? How did he get it? Because he didn't get it. What did he do? He get his phone and call Pizza Hut? He get on DoorDash or Grubhub? What because did he, he do? Prayed. He did pray. Right. But how did God send him the food? Because God sent the food. God sent the food. Have a seat for me, Junior. Junior. God sent the food to Elijah in a really weird way. Junior. Have a seat. That's one way he did it. But in that first little clip, what brought him food? There was an animal, Michaela. What was it? Um, God sends birds to get food and give them to him. He sent some birds. Oh, he sent some birds. Mr. Douglas said he made a joke when I was telling what we were going to talk about, and he said it was what, Raven DoorDash? Ra yeah, Raven Delivery <laughs> Service or something. <laughs> so God sent, I think it would be pretty cool if you were like seeing a bird and then a bird just came up to you and dropped the pizza off to you, like, here you go. I like, like a burger. So, and then that second clip was actually from another story about Elijah. He went to that woman and her son and asked her, her to make him some food. And then you saw what happened. What happened with that woman? Because he told Elijah told the mom, the mom to go make something for her and her son. And what did what did the mom say, Sarah? What did the mom say? Do you remember? Sarah. Do you remember what the mom said when Elijah said, "You need a drink of water." We'll get a cup in a minute. Cup. What did what did the mom say when Elijah said, "Go get yourself something to eat"? What did she say, Elijah? That she used it all up. That she used it all up. She just probably looked at Elijah like, dude, you crazy. I used everything I had for you. And then what happened? The neighbor dropped off more oil and flour. Right? No, God oh. did. God did? He's like, Papa, I'll write this stuff. God went, <laughs> yeah. Come back. He went like this. And there it was. There it was. Amen. So, He's like, pick all this up. Come yes, anyway. Let there be food. Let's go. They saw a bunch of food. It's craziness. So this week we're going to talk about faith that he meets our needs. Faith that he meets our needs. Because we just watched him do it with Elijah. And then the, also with Moses. This Elijah. But not this Elijah, but Elijah in the Bible. But there's also a story about the, people, the Israelites in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And who is, when, who, who is that guy you guys are learning about with Pastor Jared on Wednesday? What's that? What's that guy's name? Not Pharaoh. Not Pharaoh. But who is the other guy? The guy who was just in the basket last week you learned about. Who did they put in the basket last week? Basket. Who was it? Joseph. Not Joseph. That's close. Start with an M. Moses. There it is. Moses. Moses. They put Moses in the basket. And I won't spoil the story of Moses for you. I'm going to flash forward. I'm going to fast forward. Fast forward. All the way to almost the end, when Moses and the Israelites were in the wilderness. Again, in the wilderness. Going crazy. Again, in the wilderness. And there was no food. And the Israelites looked at Moses and said, Moses, we're going to die. Mm -hmm. There's no food. There's no water. There's no food. There's no food. It's going, well, this is the end. I see water right there. They said, Why? Did you bring us out of Egypt just to let us die? We were better in Egypt as slaves, because at least when we were slaves, we were able to eat a little something, something. 
What are you going to do? Couldn't Moses? you just steal the people's food that you're going to do? So Moses really? prayed. He prayed. He, he said, God, what are we going to This is a problem. Get all these people. How many of you guys get angry when you're hungry? Come on. So, you you so that's that hangry, you get isn't that it? That hangry. Yeah. You, get, you get grouchy. You get irritable. Really you get, food. you say, give me some food. I'm going to just eat you, okay? They are going to eat my hungry. So, God, so Moses prayed to God and said, God, please help me out here. We need something. So check this out. This is what God did. This is cool. This is cool. God sent this thing called manna. They all went to sleep and gave all the cup and there was manna on the ground. And it was like, I don't even know how this, the Bible says like bread. I, I think it was like frosted flakes or something that he just put on the ground. And they were, he, and this is a, he sent it to them in the morning and he sent them quail, which is a kind of bird, a kind of, kind of a meat, in the evening. So they had bread in the morning and quail at night time. A little breakfast and dinner for you. So that's how... God, huh? No, no lunch. That's how God met their needs. Now, here's the thing, boys and girls. If God can meet their needs, you think He can meet your needs? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. If He can meet, if He can make ravens bring food to the prophet Elijah, do you think He can take care of you? Yeah. If you, yes. if he was able to make more oil and flour for a woman, for a woman in the Bible, do you think he can take care of you? Yes. If he can take care of the Israelites in the middle of nowhere in the desert, do you think he can take care of you? Yes. Yes, he can. He can. In fact, our memory verse. This is kind of a long one. It's in foot. It's foot Philippines. Philippians. I can't say that. Mr. Philippians. W. Philippians. Thank you. I can't say that word. I struggle with it. Four. Dot. Dot. I don't know if Mrs. Hannah does some dot dot, but that's okay. We're just different. No, Four, dot dot nineteen. It says, "My God, shall, oh, no. nope. my God shall abundantly supply all your need according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus." Woo! That's long. So, what this means is that God's got it under control. God's got you back. God's good. That's what we've been learning. That's what's been coming up over and over and over again. That God's got you back. In fact, this is Jesus Himself talking. Jesus said in Matthew dot dot six twenty six. It says, "Look at the birds up here. There's a bird in the air right there. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns and let be. He's eating a bumblebee. Yeah. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they?" Again, that's Matthew 6, dot, dot, 26. So what this means, what this do you ever see birds freaking out about what they're going to eat? Yeah. No. No, they don't. God always provides something for the birds to eat, right? All the time. All the time. They don't worry. Birds don't worry about it. Now, this says. There's one bird over there. There's a seagull right there. He don't have to worry about nothing because he's not real. So, this, it says, our Heavenly Father feeds him. So, God takes care of the birds and all the animals. Yeah, he gave, he gave this bird a little bumblebee to snack on. A little nom, nom, nom. So, then it says, are you not much more valuable than they? So, boys and girls, we know that God made everything, right? We've talked about that. We've talked about that. Little less can make everything, or might need everything. We know, we just learned that he takes care of the birds. But what the end of that verse says, I'll take questions in a minute, what the end of a verse says is that we, that Jesus cares more about us than he does about the birds and all the other animals, because we are his children. So if he's going to take care of the birds and the animals, he's going to take care of you. Now, that is a lot easier said than done. Because can I be honest with you? Can I be honest with you? I like being honest with you. Let me be honest with you. Sometimes, a lot of people forget that. Sometimes I have forgot that. Because sometimes, like the, like the skipper has had a problem with a lighthouse, sometimes people freak out when they don't know how they're going to meet their needs. They don't understand. Or they start to overthink it. They start to say, well, I got this. I, I don't know how I'm going to afford that. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know. 
They freak out. They freak out. I freaked out. I go, I don't know. And then you do this thing called worry, and they get so stressed about it. So it is a lot easier said than done. But here's the thing. What Jesus also said in Matthew 6 is that if the birds don't worry, why should we worry? Because worrying doesn't do any good. How many of you guys have ever been worried before? I know I've been worried before. I've been worried about a lot of stuff. How many of you guys, by worrying, has anything good ever happened? Does worry help or does it hurt? It hurts. It hurts, right? It doesn't, worrying about things doesn't make anything any better. And actually, doc, I've heard doctors say that worrying and, and stress can really do some bad things to your body. It can make you sick, can do all kinds of things. So this thing called worry is a big thing. Big bad thing. It's a big bad thing. But, like Jesus says in Matthew 6, we shouldn't worry. We shouldn't worry. Because we have a God who is watching over us, and if he takes care of the birds, he's going to take care of you. Now, there is a story about a guy named George. 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 This dude named George, I'm going to show you a video of my friend George. Pastor Austin? Yes. I want to tell you something about what happened, what's happening to me. I will, you can tell me just a little bit, okay? Okay. I'm going to show you a video about my friend George. My, jo my friend George has a lot of faith. He's got a lot of faith. So let's see what makes my friend George so cool. Let's watch this. We are going to be looking at the life of George Muller. He was born in Germany over 200 years ago in 1805. At just the age of 10, George became a thief. He would steal money and he would lie to people. He would spend his money on alcohol and on betting. Even when his mum was dying in bed, George was out partying with his friends, drinking and gambling. We would look at George's life and think that there is no hope for him, that he's messed up. But God had a bigger plan. God had a better plan for him. George's dad paid for him to go to Bible school. And one day he was in Bible study, and all of a sudden it clicked. He realized that God was a God who cares. God was a God who loves. It completely transformed his life. He went to England and met a lady called Mary, who he then married. In England at this time, there were lots of children who were living in the streets. They would steal bread and steal money to survive. They would sleep out in the cold, and no one cared for them. People would avoid them like rats. He decided that he was going to start an orphanage for children who didn't have any parents. He said it didn't matter what the backstory was, everyone was going to be accepted. He also made a decision that he wasn't going to ask anybody for money. He was trusting in God. He said that if it was God's work, then God would provide. Immediately, people started donating things, knives and forks, plates, cloth and furniture. In just one year, George started three children's homes and was looking after 90 children. He had to constantly trust in God to provide food to feed them, to provide clothes to keep them warm, and to provide people to look after them and to train them so that when they grew up, they would be able to get jobs. Soon... George had four houses, and he felt God saying that he needed to build a bigger house so that he could look after more children. The only problem was, was that it cost a lot of money. It would have cost about £800,000 in today's money. And George continued not to ask anyone to help with the finances. But amazingly, God provided in just one week a tenth of what was needed. So he had the money and he was able to build the building. It could look after 300 children at one time. Over the next 21 years, George went on to build another four homes that could look after 2,000 children in total. Unfortunately, George's wife died. 
but this didn't hold him back. He married another lady called Susanna and went around the world teaching and preaching about God who cares for us and cares even for those people that no one else looks after. In his lifetime, George looked after 10,000 children. God provided 120 million pounds in our money today. This kid, who was a thief, a liar, and a gambler at the beginning of his life, who no one thought would make anything of his life, God had a bigger plan, a better plan. So my friend George obviously had a lot of faith. So what did he do? What did George Mueller, is his last name, George Mueller, what did he do? Is he still alive or is he dead? No, he's, he's passed away by now. What, what did he do, Angel? He, um, he used to do bad things. Like, he started doing it when he was young. Mm -hmm. And then he, and then God had a di different plan, so he decided to, like, um, help kids. And then he got, like, a hundred and Yeah, he got a father. Mm -hmm. Did he ask people for money? Or what did he do, Athena? He was doing bad things at first. Yeah, he was doing bad things at first. But when he decided to make the orphanage, he decided not to ask anybody for anything. In fact, what he decided to do was he prayed and he had faith that God would meet the needs for his orphanage. I mean, we saw in the video, he helped a whole lot of boys and girls just like yourself. And he did it without asking anybody for anything. He just prayed and trusted God. And in fact, VeggieTales, how many VeggieTales fans do I have in here? Yeah. VeggieTales told this story. And they, yeah. get, they went in a little bit more into how people just random, how God would just randomly send people to do donations for them. So George Mueller and his wife Mary, and then his, his other wife after Mary passed away, they had a lot of faith that he God. Married Mary he married he Mary. Yes. He married Mary. And they had faith that God would meet their needs. So. Which Mary are you talking about? The Mary that made God a different, a different Mary. Different Mary. So basically, you can say, don't worry, just trust in Jesus. Yep. Don't worry, trust Jesus. Yeah. This is like, yeah, man, there's good stuff. Don't worry, just trust Jesus. Jesus. So in my life, personally, because I'm trying to move out right now, still. Yay! So, praise. Tomorrow's like, thank you, Lord. He's, tomorrow's always telling me I need to move out because I'm 25 years old. So tomorrow's like, you need You're to 25? get out. You're 25? No. Yeah. I'm not 24. As I, am doing this, as I am doing this adult life fit, I have realized that I don't have a lot of money. So... And I was getting worried about it, and I was getting worried about it, and I was getting worried about it. And then my dad said, why are you getting so worried about it? Because worrying doesn't do any good. You just need to stop worrying and start trusting in Jesus. That's right. So that's what I said. I said, you know what, Dad? You're a smart man. So, guys, hey. Too much chatter. I said, Dad, you are a smart man. That's why you did that. I, you're right, because worrying isn't doing any good. I just have to start trusting in Jesus. So I started praying. I said, Jesus, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea how you're about ready to turn this thing around so I can get enough money to move out and start living on my own. I have no idea how you're going to turn around. But I said, God, I am done worrying about this. I'm just, I'm going to trust in you more. That's what I just said. I said, I'm just going to trust in you. Well, I have some special friends that are going to sing a song. i got to make sure they're here. So, Mr. Doug, do you want to come and recap the story of George Miller for me really quick? i got to get my friends. Let's see how I can. Who can tell me about Mr. Miller? George. 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 George, George Miller. Kayla. Kayla, what are you doing? No, no, no. Kayla. Sit down, sit down. So, who can tell me about George? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What what changed him? Where did he go, and what what did he end up doing? Yes, Elijah. Bible school. He went to Bible school, and then what did he do? Because just because you go to Bible school doesn't mean you're going to change. It just means you're going to learn something. What else did he do? Learn 
What do you got? Huh? He learned about Jesus, but what did he do? What changed his mind? Yes, Athena. He okay, so he had to so he decided to make a change after learning about God, said, I want to follow more like God, right? So then what did he do? You said it. What was the main thing they were talking about? Yes. He likes to, he saved kids because he what he what did he do he built homes right and then as he needed as more kids came he he built more homes you guys remember how much money they said he eventually raised in total one hundred thousand one hundred thousand hold on calm down calm down whoa 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 one person speaking at a time. Yes, sir. 120,000 pounds. Yes. Do you know what that is in like our currency? It's like 150. Because theirs is worth more than ours. So we have to pay more. Isn't that cool? That's not fair. Not Well, I mean, life ain't fair. <laughs> exactly. That's why we have God. Right? Right? So tell me more about, tell me more about uh, George. Anything else? How many kids did he end up uh, helping by the end? Or how many of the homes did it carry total? Did anybody remember? Four. Anybody over here? Four hundred. More than that, how many? Six hundred. How about you? Ten hundred. Ten hundred. A little bit more. A little bit more. How about like, what about two thousand or so with the, between the four homes, right? Almost three thousand. I'm hearing noises in all different places and not many answers. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Oh, by the way, if I don't know your name, I'm sorry. My name is Michael. Oh, hello, Michael. My yes, sir. Two thousand. And? Two thousand is fine. Because that's what they were talking about in total. Because how many homes did he end up having? Four. Yes, Six. All right. Five. Five in total? Was it five? What, it was four in total? Either way, either way, it was more than one, right? But what was the other cool thing that George did that was really awesome and it was all about praise to, and uh, praise to God for it? What did he do? Yes, Michaela, you just look like you're red. What do you got? Um, he also went around the world and changed um, people how to play Okay. Not the one I was looking for, but I think mean, that's good. Anybody else? Mr. Gunn. Yep. Mr. Gunn. Okay. Stevie, do you have, did you watch anything about George? I did. Okay, so I want you to tell me. Hold on. I want to see if Stevie knows. What did George do? What was the cool thing that George did? Why do you look so little? Mr. George Mueller. Hold on, hold on. I want to hear Stevie. Mr. George Prayed, and he had faith and trust in God that he would meet all his needs. That's what I wanted to know. I Thank know you, Stevie. Oh, you're See, welcome. you're, you're welcome. not as mad as somebody says you are. I know, Pastor. I want to have. But I Stevie have a song. I have a song to sing. A song to sing? I have a song to sing. But, but I'm only going to sing this song if people can stay quiet and in their seats. Nobody moving around. I have a question. And I will start singing this song. I have a question. What? Can I do a After the song. Maybe. After the song, maybe. Okay, ready? Here. I can sing a song like that. Can you tell me something? Oh, I have a problem. 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 I Gonna sing it, no, for no, don't worry. Trust Jesus. Can you? In your life, you'll have some trouble. But when you oh worry, you make it double. Oh my. Trust Jesus. Oh my. Don't worry, trust Jesus now. What? 
Adults would like to hear that song too because a lot of adults worry. I didn't do it. That wasn't me. So what do you guys think of that song? I mean, what was the good? What was the message about that song? What was? Oh, it? my grandma's ringtone. Well, that's don't good. It's worry, a good ringtone. Don't worry, be happy, or don't worry, and what? Trust you. There you go. That's because that's faith. Don't worry, because as the song said and as the Bible says. You know, don't worry about She's the food. Jesus is going to provide. Hey, you know what? That's a good song. I like it. She's still people. dancing. That's cool. Because she's got that spirit, got that fire. I saw a couple of you guys in there. You guys were getting up and getting into the song, and I loved it. I loved it a lot. In fact, like I said, I think you're. Yeah, you're a dinosaur. All right, come over here. All right, anyway. Yes, sir. Right. But, yep. Yep. I'm in eighth grade now. Of course. I can barely remember it. But this is still this is a good version yeah. too, right? Yeah. Like I said, I really think that Pastor Austin should have you guys practice this song a lot and sing it to the adults. Oh, yeah. Practice yeah, what? what? what My practice that song, Don't Worry, Trust Jesus. I think adults, just like kids, you know, they have a lot of worries, a lot of problems on their mind. And I think this song, because it pumped up these kids, I think it could pump up the adults, too. Please play it again. I want to play it again. I like it. Play it again. 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 So I guess, hey! I guess Stevie Merkel did a good job then, huh? Uh, you know what? Even the kids were getting in. I mean, they, Stevie called me. He said, I know what you're talking about. I, I have a song. You know, like, okay, I'm trusting you, Stevie. Don't let and me down. And he didn't let you so down, he did he? didn't let me down. He didn't let me down. So, good job, Steve. He already left. He, he got away from his escape guess, tunnel. Guess what? There, so. I think I think I want to Yeah? You're a dinosaur? All right, so. Yeah, like this. That's Stevie. So, boys and girls, the point is, like Mr. Dog said, like, 
to not worry. Trust who? God. Oh, that was scary. Let's try that again. Don't worry and trust who? God. It says Jesus. Can we still? Well, Jesus, God. Okay, we'll try one more time. That's the whole thing we have everybody here. Don't worry, trust who? Jesus. Jesus and God. Because. Jesus and God. Like it says in Philippians, because if, because like I said, we have a God who can meet Elijah's needs, and can meet the Israelites' needs, and can meet George Mueller's needs, God can take care of you too. So when we worry about how things are going to go, we just need to take a deep breath. Pull it out. I don't want to see you pass out. Take a deep breath, and we have to remember to not worry because God's got this under control. So, what are you going to tell your parents or guardian when they ask you what you learned in uh, junior church or kids' church today? Yeah. No, what are you going to tell them? Don't worry. Don't worry. Trust Jesus. So we're going to pray really quick. This church is almost done. We're going to pray. Oh, um, one at a time. No, I was just Junior, you don't want to drink. Junior, I can see that. Get a drink. 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 Do not talk, do not blurt out, show respect. You guys were doing really good until now. Now, not a single word. So we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray, because I don't know, maybe there's some of you guys, or maybe you're worried about something. Maybe, it may not even be any thing like adults have to worry about, but maybe you have a project in school coming up that you're worried about. Maybe you have a test in school. Maybe there is a situation that you're a little worried about, a little scared about. Like we just talked about, don't worry, trust Jesus. Trust that he can help you with your school projects, with your school tests, with anything. So I want to go to your back, your head, close your eyes, I'm going to pray for you. We have, this, we have this hymn playing, it's called It's Eyes on the Sparrow, because like we read, we we'll learned about in Matthew 6, if he watches the sparrows, if Jesus watches the birds, he's going to watch over you. So, I want everybody to bow your heads, close your eyes. So, God, I thank you for our boys and girls here today. God, I don't know if anybody is, if anybody in here has been worrying about anything, maybe a situation, Maybe a school thing. Maybe they're worried about their part in the Christmas play. Because I know I have some kids in here who are involved with that. Maybe they're worried about that. Whatever it is, God, I thank you that we have you who meets our needs, who helps us out, even in school situations, even in activities. So, God, I just pray for any boy and girl who's worried about to help them give that worry to you and let them know that you got this under control because God you got this you can meet their needs you can help them out if we put our trust in you so boys and girls if it's you and if you're worried about something and you want us to pray for you you can come up here right now and I'll pray with you guys if you're worried about anything and if not that's okay but if you're not worried about anything right now but God I just pray that when the boys and girls do get worried about something that they'll remember what we've talked about in kids' church today, about how you watch the sparrows, how you watch the birds, and you're watching over them. So, and when people do get worried, help them to remember what we talked about, about not to worry, but to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so, so really quick, uh, once, go ahead. Once, guess what? Once church is over, in a little bit, you guys, if you brought a lunch, awesome. If you Who brought did, a lunch? Sarah. Nobody. Nobody. Okay, so. I did. So here's the deal. If you did not bring a lunch, that's fine. Once, once your parent comes to pick you up, or whoever, once your parent comes to pick you up, or whoever's picking you up,
please, please, please be back at 1.30. One thirty. One thirty. You know what? Thank you, Tamara. That's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you so much. I got you. I got you. So, Okay, let's do this like tomorrow's doing. That way I know everybody's on the same page. I need to be back here at 1.30. 1.30. What time? 1.30. So go get yourself your McDonald's, your Burger King, your Taco Bell, your Wendy's, your Arby's, whatever you're doing. we be back here by 1.30. But since we have this church over, or are we still going? Um, his ma her mom's here. Okay. She wants to talk to you afterwards. Okay. So if, as church is still going, we have a little bit more time, where did we leave off last week? We've been going through the books in the Bible. Afina, we really needed you last week, let me tell you, because we didn't know. We didn't know. So last week, we learned about Obadiah, Jonah, and Micah. So our next three, our next, our next three are going to be our harder, where Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah. Can you guys say that with me? Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah. I said to bring five. So, Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah. Those are our next three books of the Bible that we're trying to learn. So, we're going to back it up. We're almost at the New Testament. We're almost there. So, what is, who can tell me? Show hands, show hands. What are the first five books? Just the first five. Just the first five. First five. Athena, first five. Okay, so Gen Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And then what comes next? Who can tell me the next two? Next two. Sarah, do you remember? Next two? No. no? Who can help her out? What are the next two? I know you know. What are the next two? All right, Athena, help them out. Joshua and Judges. Joshua and Judges. And then tomorrow, you next one. Say it nice and loud for me. Ruth. Okay. So Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Yes. And then what's next after that? Angel, do you remember? What was, what was it? What was the next two? Okay. What was next? Hey, Go ahead. Keep going. That's all. All right. So say it again for me, Athena, so they can hear you. All right, so after Ruth, we have 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, and 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Chronicles, thank you, Tamara. That's another big word. And then what? So let me, I'll, I'll help you carry it out. Know it's a lot. We're almost through the Old Testament. So, here we go. This is where we are. So we're up to here. So we have Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. And then what's the next one? It's not Job. How do you say it? Job. Job, right? It's Job, not Job. It looks like Job. And then Psalms, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes, Son of Solomon. Who can tell me what the major prophets are? I know the last one. The first one starts with an I. Isaiah. Isaiah. And then we have Jeremiah. What was that one that starts with an L? Not Leviticus. Leviticus is up here. No. Leviticus. Lamentations. There it is, dude. Lamentations.